coroner's statement on Michael Hastings' death has been released, and the official cause is auto versus fixed object or tree. This has been the official story from the government and the mainstream media from the very beginning, that Hastings' Mercedes crashed head-on into a tree and instantaneously exploded, just like in the movies. Maybe this is something that we should test. That every car that goes off a cliff equals an exploding fireball. It's a tumbling, tall tale from Tinseltown that always ends with a bang. But does a cliff dive with a tank full of gas mean explosive car carnage is guaranteed? Yes, the cliché of cars bursting into flames in a collision is a Hollywood myth. The government's own figures show there's a 99.8% chance that you won't die, even if your car catches on fire. The reason is that most car fires look like this recent video, a malfunction in the engine and a fire that gradually builds over 5, 10 minutes or more, allowing the occupants to get out safely. And even after the car is totally on fire, fed by fuel and plastic parts, Firemen approach it at close quarters and put it out quickly. Well, under what conditions will a car crash and burn? The explosions will have to involve the gas tank. Look at this clip of a couple of race cars crashing. The first car spins out, crashes at very high speed, and parts go flying everywhere, but no fire. The second car hits the same bad spot on the track and follows the same trajectory, hits the first car. Now there's an immediate explosion. Why? Because this time the gas tank bursts spraying fuel into the air, which ignites on contact with hot surfaces. The key to a car explosion is a bursting fuel tank. Remember the Ford Pintos from the 1970s? As this video illustrates, the gas tank bursts on collision, spraying fuel in the air, which then explodes. So a car can explode if it's a rear-end collision and the fuel tank burst. But this didn't happen in Michael Hastings' case. The LAPD claims that the car exploded on a frontal impact without bursting the gas tank. To put it mildly, that is highly improbable. The gas tank did not burst and did not explode in the fire. Even more improbable is that a frontal impact would eject the engine 100 to 150 feet down the road. Couldn't have written a scene like this for a movie where the engine flies from the car, which was about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards up, right down here to this telephone pole. A frontal collision pushes the engine back into the car, which causes most of the deaths from frontal collisions. And there is zero chance that Michael Hastings' car exploded from a frontal impact with a tree and ejected the engine 150 feet at a right angle. That's why InfoWars called the official report BS from day one. Before all the information about what Hastings was investigating at the time, and before all the communications to friends and colleagues surfaced, where he was warning them about government reprisals for what he was investigating. It appears from surveillance footage that there were multiple explosions very close to each other which would match the initial eyewitness account. Luis Cortez said, I was just coming northbound on Highland and I saw a car going really fast. All of a sudden, I saw a jackknife. I saw parts fly everywhere and I slammed on my brakes and stopped and tried to call 911. It sounded like a bomb went off in the middle of the night. My house shook. The windows were rattling. In a breaking story today, LA Weekly reports that Joanna Thigpen a friend and neighbor of Michael Hastings said that he was very worried that someone was tampering with his car. He came to believe his Mercedes was being tampered with. Nothing I could say could console him, said Thigpen. One night in June, he came to her apartment after midnight and urgently asked her to borrow her Volvo. He said he was afraid to drive his own car. She declined, telling him her car was having mechanical problems. She said he was scared and he wanted to leave town. It isn't just that bombs can be planted on cars. Speed, steering and virtually every aspect of a modern car is under software control, and software can be hacked. Friends said he drove like a granny, but the car was traveling at very high speed. As former National Coordinator for Security and Counterterrorism, Richard Clark, told the Huffington Post, What has been revealed as a result of some research at universities is that it's relatively easy to hack your way into the control system of a car. And to do such things as cause acceleration when the driver doesn't want acceleration, or to throw on the brakes when the driver doesn't want the brakes on, or to launch an airbag. You can do some really highly destructive things now through hacking a car. Well, former counterterrorism expert Richard Clark knows about car cyber attacks. He knows exactly what can be done with it. And this has been around for quite some time. It's not a recent development. Hastings was driving a new Mercedes, designed to drive at high speeds on the Autobahn where there's no speed limit, Mercedes has been a world leader in safety features. Safety systems have been and remain one of their key selling points. 
They invented anti-lock braking systems. They invented electronic stability and counter steering. More recent developments from Mercedes have the car's computer monitoring cars in front, back, and side, and controlling the car to avoid rear-end collisions or lane-changing accidents. To enable all of these functions, the computer has the ability to control brakes, acceleration, steering, transmission, Every system that affects speed and direction, even things like airbags and seat belts, are under computer control and can be hacked. Mercedes has been a pioneer and has more safety systems than any other manufacturer. Normally, that's a very good thing. But once these systems are hacked, they can be a toolkit for assassination. Drilling down a little bit, modern vehicles consist of between 30 and 100 embedded control units, which are essentially small computers connected via a CAN bus. In a first paper, the researchers from UCSD and the University of Washington showed that if they could touch the CAN bus through that diagnostic port, they could take over all of the functionality of the car that's controlled by software. And in a modern automobile, that's pretty much everything. They responded with a second paper in which they showed a variety of ways of touching that CAN bus without physically touching the car. These attacks involved infecting uh, the computers in the repair shop and then having that inspection, infection spread to the car through the diagnostic port or hacking in through the Bluetooth system, or using the cell phone network to break in through the telematics unit that's normally used to provide roadside assistance. And who would be likely to hack a car or to do a cyber attack? As Aaron Schwartz pointed out, They are funding the creation of vulnerabilities. They are offering rewards for people to find and build vulnerabilities into the system and give it to the U.S. government so then the U.S. government can launch cyber attacks. The U.S. government, the largest and most sophisticated hacker in the world, also has a history of assassinations. In their declassified manuals, they emphasize that it is preferred that an assassination look like an accident. That same government, that same agency in the government, the CIA, was being investigated by a journalist who knew he had dirt on them. Let's go to Richard Clark again for the final word on Michael Hastings. I'm not a conspiracy guy. In fact, I've spent most of my life knocking down conspiracy theories. But my rule has always been you don't knock down a conspiracy theory until you can prove it wrong. And in the case of Michael Hastings, what evidence is available publicly is consistent with a car cyber attack. The physical evidence hasn't supported the government's story from day one. The government had the motive, the means, and the method to kill by either car bomb or by cyber attack. But don't expect the government to investigate itself. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Inform yourself and reach out to others with a print version of InfoWars magazine. Available as an annual subscription or in discounted multipacks at InfoWarsStore.com.